This is the second part of a meeting. Normally we would invite the media to be present, but if we have too many people crowding in one room, that might be not be so desirable. So we've decided to adopt a different method today. And we've asked the media to <coughs> to sit in a larger room upstairs to and after the meeting we'll meet with them to brief them on the <coughs> on what we deliberate on, uh, on what we're deliberating on today so first of all I'd like to welcome the <coughs> police officers to our meeting and apologies have been received from several members who are not able to attend. So I think we have a quorum already. So <clears throat> according to our rules of procedure, we may now call the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is the confirmation of the last meeting, which has already been circulated. Let me ask whether members of any proposed amendments. If not, then shall we confirm the minutes? There are several items on the agenda today. Item two, for item two, I'd like to invite the police representative to brief us or to give us a presentation on escalation of violence at public order events. Mr. Lau, could you first of all <clears throat> brief us on the, or oh, Madam Tam, rather. Thank you, Chairman. Since June last year, I think we have all witnessed that during, you know, the public demonstrations and public order events, the violence being adopted is escalating. Uh, our frontline officers <clears throat> in the course of these major public order events have encountered various challenges and difficulties. On the one hand, they need to protect life and property of the public and sa safeguard their own personal safety. Today, uh, we have seen a superintendent, Mr. Lee, from the <clears throat> uh, Organized Crime and Tri Division to give pre members on the use of violence by the, by the uh, mobsters. Good afternoon, Chairman and members. First of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to brief members on the <clears throat> violence in public order events. Because uh, I, during the <clears throat> uh, public order events, I, I, uh, my division is responsible for dealing with, you know, cases involving violence. Undoubtedly, in the whole process, we we are seeing more and more and more violence. We hope that we, by categorizing the events and and by making use of statistics, we can objectively present to you the violence that we are now uh, confronting. To begin with, I'd like to <clears throat> give brief view on the background of those who have been arrested. <clears throat> Looking at the age profile, they, those arrested would range from the age of 11 to 84. There were a total of 7,549 arrested, 1,191 have already been prosecuted, and 50 have already been uh, found guilty. The ratio between men and uh, women is 5 to 1. Looking at the age distribution of those who have arrested, those ranging from 17 to 20 and 21 to 30 constituted the majority of those arrested. And they make about 74% of those arrested. The rest would, <clears throat> or those who, uh, the seniors would make up a smaller proportion. And we have, you know, divided the period concerned into three stages. Uh, for example, the first, se second column actually <clears throat> was during the summer holiday between February and March. 
uh, we have the occupation of the <coughs> tertiary institutions. The largest number of people arrested were, were took place between September and November, and we and from December to February, the number of people arrested <coughs> were smaller. To find out about the ratio, you know, let, let's let's take a look at this chart. I think this chart will more clearly indicate that those are under 20. More, we are seeing more and more people under 20 being arrested. We are particularly concerned that for those between December to February, there was a drastic increase in the number of those under 16 arrested. And this, so we are now, we still want to find out why more and more young people have come forward and took part in the, in the demonstration and have been arrested. Next, students. So far, we have arrested more than 3,000 students, and they make up about 49% of those arrested. And tertiary, those studying tertiary institutions, we have 1,700, 1,300 secondary school students and four primary school students. By adopting the same approach, let's take, uh, divide this into different time periods. And I think there have been some <clears throat> observations which are worrying. First of all, we are seeing an increase in the number of arrested, uh, number of students arrested. 24.8% from June to August last year, and up to 44.9% uh, uh, from December last year to uh, February this year. And looking at the the profile, originally most of uh, most of those arrested were university students, but towards the end, you'll find that among those arrested and in, pro in terms of proportion, uh, the, the number of secondary school students have already made up the majority. Uh, they make up 23% uh, or 43% of all those arrested. Amongst those arrested, 37% of those <coughs> were between 11 and 12, 20. And the students made up 40.9% of, of the total number of those arrested. Re looking at the trend, those under the age of 16 and secondary school students, number of uh, arrested is on the rise. We are very concerned about young people and students who, uh, who have been arrested because when we were young, society would protect young people and would advise us not to you know, break the law. I understand that some of those arrested, while well, they know that they, are, they are, have broken the law and they are about to break the law, they have not really concerned about the implications <coughs> uh, uh, in respect of the, the, the future. But this is not what we are discussing today. I hope uh, people who are responsible for taking care of the welfare of students will try to find out, you know, what is the, 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 <coughs> the, the implications. Next. The main topic we uh, we want to focus on today uh, it is the tactics adopted by the mobsters. They are tribe different areas, uh, fake news, you know, <coughs> touching, uh, you know, uh, discriminating against those who do not agree with them, paralyzing society and escalating violence. All these are violence. Of course, uh, for example, we are seeing escalating violence and. Let's begin with the fake news. Well, this is, uh, you know, <clears throat> a pamphlet designed by the PPRB. Uh, actually, it does not cover all the fake news. Overall speaking, there are two types of fake news. First of all, people adopt an opportunistic approach and try to sensationalize certain events. For example, uh, male police officer searching female suspects in Causeway Bay. That wasn't really the case. In, uh, 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 in the Lambton Station, police officers throwing bricks 
but that again wasn't the case because we, the officer was only clearing the bricks which other people have already thrown at them. Another type of fake news is a fabrication. For example, in Kui, uh, during an incident in Kui Chung, we were accused of using petrol bombs and throwing them at the rioters. But that actually wasn't the case. It was a case where people actually, you know, <clears throat> you know, uh, Photoshop the, the, the video, uh, you know, uh, uh, capture. There are also a few pieces of fake news which went viral. First of all, this is the, the MTR station, and uh, with, with looking at the August the 31st incident, I don't think you, you, you have had been to the location, but you'll find that uh, people have been putting up an altar here and, you know, burning incense, you know, to the disease. They have uh, the names of those people who are supposed to have, uh, you know, died, but nobody has reported the, uh, these cases to the police. Well, this is something which has actually been, <clears throat> you know, you know, troubling the whole community. Uh, every, every time we come to the 31st of the month, people will commemorate uh, the, 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 these people. Next, San Gok Ling, where there were allegations of sexual, you know, offences. For example, uh, there were some explicit details of how the victims were being, being, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, violated and so on, and they have deliberately highlighted the fact that we need to care about the, the health of the victims, and therefore it's not really appropriate for to ask them to come forward uh, as an excuse to, 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 to justify or explain why nobody come forward to report to the police about such major sexual offences. And they've also come up with this, you know, pictures like this, about a police officer, uh, somebody in a uh, you know, police uniform. But if you pay close attention, you'll find that this is actually you know, a scene from a pornographic movie uh, which is made in France. So you have a police officer, they've added some subtitles to, to, to it. Another example is that there have been claims at the latest late, later stages. Some people were made to commit suicide, and some people claim that they have made fact checks, and that this is true, and they say that these are the people who have been known to have passed away. There have been claims that many people have disappeared without other people knowing about it. But looking at the tally of those who have disappeared in 2019, in fact, uh, the, the figure was down 13 percent compared with 2018. Of course, uh, some say that they don't believe those numbers, but that is the truth. And they also did not directly say that the police were murdering people. They say people have been made to commit suicide. They will put up so-called, you know, <clears throat> you know, uh, notices about, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, about missing people and so on, and using. Uh, footage captured by uh, <clears throat> by uh, uh, cameras installed in cars. Well, this is another incident involving a, a domestic uh, helper. And, and, and this has uh, really escalated the violence um, continuously. And because of all these kind of fake news, it's uh, something like that they disseminated. Uh, so they try to just spread out the seeds to uh, to ignite the hatred like um, the uh, terrible offenses uh, and also like the sexual assaults etc and this is very difficult for us because to prove something that happened is easier than to prove something that hasn't so it's very difficult to prove otherwise that nothing had happened. And because they just have their own view um, subjectively. Now, the second part we want to talk is the doxing. Now, violence. Uh, 
because uh, we, we understand uh, the violence, uh, you, you might want to hurt other people or things or properties. But another effect of violence is uh, the uh, ignition of fear, um, especially the doxing part. So you look at the statistics here. For the nine months, there's over 3,200 uh, police officers and their family rel uh, relatives being doxed. So, and we are arresting about 45 people. They have uh, spread out all the false information over the internet. And then 11 were arrested. They uh, and are probably to uh, to uh, let uh, the, to dox the people's other people's information. And this is a very big difference in in the uh, uh, how they would dox it and how they affect our uh, coworker. Now, it's this very typical way they do. Let's say you have uh, a police officer. Uh, they are being shot in a photograph, and they were able to uh, dox their names, uh, their number of their, um, and then the uh, family members, relatives, uh, boyfriend, girlfriends. Uh, they are very good in getting those information and put up on the internet. So we sometimes had to joke, and uh, so about the number of uh, the police officers. For example, my coworker because uh, he's being doxxed. Someone would maybe order on their behalf some pizza uh, for delivery. And, and there are some even worse um, when they live uh, in a really uh, lower building, uh, with lower uh, story, and uh, his wife was pregnant, and they just kept using the laser gun to point at the residents. Those are some of the examples uh, that uh, would happen. Aside from that, um, the uh, parties, let's say funerals and weddings uh, parties. So they would use uh, some tactics uh, when they, during the uh, parties to try to make them upset. And let's say if you are the parents, um, they were worried about the ch children, right? And so they would uh, blackmail the children that being kidnapped or it's a possibility uh, of kidnapping their kids. So uh, they're all fabricated things, right? Um, but I think they just kept uh, laundering around their residence. So they have to just take the uh, um, vehicles. And then I think most of the parents as, a, as an officer, as a co-worker, they're, they're quite really worried about it. And they are very organized in finding out the uh, car plate numbers of the officers. And uh, they would try to maybe do some uh, sabotage. Uh, and this is uh, a really uh, some, some kind of a fear that's really untouched. And so... Maybe now let's look at the more realistic uh, effect of the violence. There's a discrimination of the uh, people having uh, different opinions. So let's say they would open their attack uh, for other people. Let's say if they're in support of the police, then they would they might to uh, attack or assault. Uh, people or institutions. So in that uh, period, there are over 260 shops and restaurants being uh, the destruct, uh, being attacked uh, over 336 times. And over uh, 94 uh, district uh, uh, workers are being, uh, their offices being dis uh, uh, sabotaged 106 times. And uh, well, it's usually in the triad when they practice uh, this kind of behavior, uh, like making sabotage to offices, uh, and they said you don't respect it. Now, another way we talk about is the private uh, sanction against those uh, people with different opinions. So there are three things we have to be really careful. And uh, first, you have a big demonstration, and second, 
if you take out a camera and try to take a photograph. And third, if you have a different opinions, then, uh, well, you may get, you know, um, tied up or even attacked or maybe assaulted violently. Now, this picture is kind of really uh, gross to watch uh, because I haven't really seen something like this. Uh, even maybe, you know, a manslaughter or, or, or murder cases, um, you don't see this kind of thing happen as, uh, so often. Uh, but, but on a, uh, luckily, this guy is still alive. Now, in the later stage, this kind of private assault is really uh, lethal. It's getting lethal. Um, so someone would use a hard metal to hit the head of uh, just a, another person. Uh, and this is quite luckily that he doesn't have a life threatened. Now, you look at this. I think m many of you remember why this guy was being framed and burned. Um, someone just put on the gasoline and then the f to light up the fire and then he, what happened, he just asked about the rioters, why they have to destroy the stuff there. Uh, and luckily this uh, person, he's still alive, but unfortunately because of the burning is so severe and he has to, uh, you know, wear special clothing and it takes a really long time for him to heal. So let's say, aside from the people having the different uh, opinions, uh, of course, they don't, they, they hate it the most is the police officers. And then if, uh, let's say one of our uh, coworkers, uh, coworkers, when they're off duty, they got uh, assaulted by three, uh, people uh, clad in black and some of our uh, co-workers they are off duty they try to go to the uh, to have some sports events and they were being uh, also assaulted attacked from nowhere and I would uh, enlarge the three pictures as they said says a uh, PTU Charlie then they would be uh, aware that it must be a, a constable, a police officer, who wear this kind of a cloth. And another kind is the uh, illegal road block. It's just not the uh, ordinary blocking of the road. It's, they would uh, try to halt the car, the vehicle, and then they would ask if there's any officers in the car. And my friend had uh, experienced that. So if you don't want to leave, just say, I'm, I'm not police, then officer, then you can leave. I have tried it twice. And of course, I cannot say that I'm not an officer. So I decided that when, the, so I've seen a situation like that. So before I got into their line, then I have to just uh, reroute and dr drove away. Uh, the second time, I think I just also had to drive back. Now, I'm really scared, even though I have the equipment, but this kind of thing um, to a police officer, yeah, psychologically, is a very big threat. It's a serious uh, mental um, uh, psychological uh, effect. And then we have to, uh, let's say, alter our social groups into um, names uh, that has nothing to do with the police officers. And now we talk about the fourth part is the uh, desocialization of the, the community. And they try to uh, sterilize, uh, paralyze the society. So how they do is they just try to have, they said, have some uh, target to stop the people, uh, let's say, during the period the 205 banks are being uh, sabotaged. And then 82 uh, government buildings were sabotaged 106 times. And uh, you can see all the graffiti on the walls, um, you know, try to maybe threaten the, uh, the police officers and their families. And also there's about 271 transportation facilities being sabotaged over 500 times. 
it doesn't include even the traffic light uh, sabotage and destructions. Now, aside from these destructions, they have also uh, used the occupation of roles and facilities in the university, including the uh, Hong Kong U and uh, Pok Fulam. Uh, also, the City University and the Conwell Street in Kowloon Tong. They try to use all kinds of obstacles to block the police vehicles. And uh, it's quite effectively uh, uh, blocking our operations. Now, this picture is being shot at the Baptist University and uh, United Road. And there's a Baptist hospital around. And because of this uh, event, these activities, it actually uh, affected some of the patients wanted to go to the hospital. Now, also, of course, you have the Chinese University. And uh, it's all happened in uh, November, as you all know. Now, finally, of course, the Polytechnic University and the Cross Harbor Tunnels. Um, you have the uh, serious uh, blocking and and clogging of the uh, uh, the traffic. And it has really caused a big problem in uh, stopping the tra traffic. Now, the last part, we want to talk about escalating of violence. Now, if we want to talk about the escalating of uh, uh, violence, the first stage, they would use the materials on hand, uh, the brakes, uh, the bamboo sticks, uh, the barriers, and they just use whatever's available in the road. And the second um, part, then you will have to use some portable arms, let's say the laser guns, high energy laser guns. And, and uh, it would uh, use the uh, slings, slingers with the uh, handy uh, weapons. And then they would also self-invented uh, weapons. It is this kind of uh, like a slinger, slinging machine from uh, Angry Bird. And this has happened in the uh, Polytechnic University. And because we are in the triad division, so we can see in the different part of the campus in the Polytechnic University, we can find this type of uh, self-made weapons. And you can see also at the nearby, there's an umbrella. Actually, it, it was not. It was being converted into something that would hurt people. So they would just uh, self-invented uh, the weapons. Now, they would also come up with some corrosive materials. They use the corrosive materials, uh, liquid and uh, so at the beginning, I think the, our, our co-workers, they're not uh, feeling, feeling it until they went back and then they found out uh, the uh, skins were really badly hurt. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't go to their eyes, so uh, that's a fortunate part. And then finally, they have some lethal weapon, okay? They would use the uh, knife, a cutter, and you can see this from this picture. Our officers try to leave the venues, and someone would just use the cutter and then point it and then uh, slash at the neck of uh, the officers. So one, one usage is try to kill. Also, they would use an uh, arrow. Now, that is outside the uh, Polytechnic University campus. Now, as you can see, uh, the police officers uh, so it's a communication officer, the liaison officer. So when they got hit, fortunately, the arrow only hit the uh, calf, the calf muscle of uh, his left leg. And it's a very closest going through the leg. And you can imagine if, it's, uh, if the arrow is uh, pointing through the torso of the body, then it's just hardly imagine what happened to uh, his life. And then uh, they have also some the gas bomb, although their technique, the gas bomb, they're always improving the quality of the gas bomb. So in the mid-November, 
when they uh, occupied the three uh, campuses, we already found over 10,000 gas bombs. And I went inside in the uh, Polytechnic University. They actually have a production line. It's just use different materials to sort it out, how to store it, how to get it. And then you have the all kind of uh, uh, the production line procedures. Now, these 10,000 gas bombs were not included the, in the, I, I think you just just throw it at will um, without uh, really uh, considering the consequences, it's just quite easily to throw it out. Okay, so let's go to the December. We have the second phase. They began to use the guns, shooting the shotguns. So in our operations, uh, the 8th of December, we find the uh, one one of the P80 uh, revolver. I think this, this revolver is a semi-automatic uh, pistol, can shoot about, and also had the 105 bullets. And uh, characteristics is, uh, is economical. And then they only order the parts from different places. And then with people with knowledge, they just assemble the pistol. And fortunately, they haven't got the chance to use it. And because there's so many bullets, you can imagine the consequences if they were able to use it. Now, in the second case, uh, just one week thereafter, in two operations, we found one AR-15 uh, rifles and two the P-80 and a 255 uh, bullets. And it's unfortunately, when you talk unfortunate because uh, they have used the gun, but fortunately they they haven't really used it, um, and the AR-15 actually is the gun that uh, the police would probably use. The uh, characteristic of this card, it have the uh, ring form uh, 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 bullet uh, dispenser, and they can uh, put a lot of uh, bullets inside it, and uh, it dispenses at a quick speed. So we kind of worry about it. So if you remember, I think in 2017, uh, in Las Vegas, there's a guy using uh, the AR-15 from a hotel window and then kill uh, hundreds of people. Imagine if uh, they use this kind of rifle to shoot at people, it's a very dangerous thing. Now, in, on the 17th of January in Shatin, we found another P-80 revolver and also 92 bullets. This is uh, from no, uh, December to Janu January is a really alarming for us to uh, discover such uh, so many cases. Now, another th violence that has escalated is the uh, explosive materials. Now, in the uh, entire actions uh, periods, uh, from last year, 19th of uh, July, we were able to find some TATP in Chun One. It's about 1.5 kilograms of the TATP. And now this kind of powder, we actually didn't realize what it is, what it was. I thought uh, maybe this is some kind of uh, maybe some explosive materials. And then we found the uh, uh, expertise. Uh, and then the expert told us that this is this is bad, so we have to evacuate first because it's TATP, and I'm, I'm not even sure we can handle it on site. <coughs> so we got to evacuate first, and uh, it might just go off. So this is the first time that we uh, encountered the TATP because uh, now this is only a raw material. In the first on the first of August, so we. Um, found the uh, uh, smoke bomb in Tin Shui Wai Yun Long, and we found about 30 of those. And then uh, we have seen people using it. On the 13th of uh, October, to me, I think we, we're just getting more <coughs> alert now because we saw the TATP. And then in the Nathan, on, in the Nathan Road in Mong Kok, we actually heard an explosive sound, and then we found there's some leftover from the explosions, and uh, something similar to uh, a mobile phone 
equipment. So I think at that time, uh, we feel that we felt that there's some people want to use the remote control to uh, explode things. On the 27th of November. 普及了,普及到點呢,居然馬鞍山入邊有啲學生,中學生都拎咗啲放學校。啊,咁呢個呢就係Actually took the TATP to the schools. We were wondering why we have so much TATP now being used. We now come to the 9th of December and we receive information and operation the division found 10 kilograms of homemade bombs in the Wayan college. Uh, again, the terrorists, this is the, the, the uh, explosives which terrorists, terrorists would frequently use. On December 14, that's five days later, we arrested three persons in Xiaolangshui in Tunmun, a rather remote location where we find these three people, you know, experimenting with homemade bombs. Other than a small quantity of Explosive. They were also, you know, experimenting with a remote device, a remote device to to actually <coughs> detonate the explosive. 跟住到到咧，喺一月十四號啦嘅時候咧，我哋喺旺角同埋上水入邊咧，就搜出咗一啲嘅土製炸藥。佢唔係咧，佢嗰個形式咧係似係一個實驗室嘅形式嚟嘅。咁啊，見到入邊咧就係有一啲嘅我哋叫做 pipe bomb， 即係水喉管炸彈。放心 ，you know bombs there with some black gun powder which are locked up by screws and when they were being ignited again it could be very very you know lethal and again uh, this is a weapon frequently used by terrorists on the 27th of january in the public toilet of the main characters hospital we found a remote controlled homemade bomb uh, this time the bomb had exploded and uh, you can see that the damage was rather extensive. If somebody were inside that toilet, one could imagine the consequence. I think what is most, you know, scaring is that on social media, some people left a message saying that the, op the purpose of the operation is to bring out a message that we are able to do this. If you don't want to die, you should, you know, join the strike for the next step. We will be taking action against those at the border control point. So they were making a warning here. And less than 24 hours later, at the Shenzhen Bay border control point, we found, you know, an explosive which have not yet been detonated. And a few more days later, on February the 2nd, we found uh, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a homemade bomb which is detonated at the low wood station, and somebody admitted responsibility, saying that uh, we placed the bomb in low wood. Uh, we said we would do it, and we have we are now we, we have now done it. Of course, they are actually challenging the whole community of Hong Kong, and 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 in making this threat. Uh, we've conducted investigation for about a month. On March the 18th, March the 8th, we, you know, conducted a search in 22 locations and arrested 12 male and five female. At the scenes in, in Takok Choi, we found three semi-finished bombs, and well, but these could be used very easily. And we've also found 2.6 metric tons of chemical ingredients which could be used to make the uh, homemade bombs. So proving that they have the ability and that they will continue to carry out such attacks. So, so we're really concerned about this development. Let me now very quickly talk about the explosive. I talked a lot already about the explosive. Black gunpowder, I think we all know what this means. Is this gunpowder? which is more common, TATP. TATP actually is a very unstable explosive, which is highly efficient. But the incre incre ingredients to make, make it is easily accessible, including acetone, hydrogen peroxide, 
which are easily obtainable in many places. And they, they, it could be used and made very easily, but in the course of production, uh, when it explodes, it could <coughs> be lethal. In me uh, the TATB has been used in many, you know, famous, you know, terrorist attacks. For example, the explosion in London in 2005, where the explosion took place in the tube and on a bus. I was in the UK at the time, and the whole city was paralyzed because of this uh, incident. On in 2016, again, an explosive was placed at the Belgian. Uh, Brussels Airport and 32 people were killed and uh, next ENFO. ENFO is the abbreviation for ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. It is made up, the ingredient used is actually, uh, is, is the, the ingredient is used to make fertilizers. It's a very common industrial explosive and again it's commonly used by terrorists. For example, in 1995, in Oklahoma City, there was, you know, you know, a car explosion, and a small quantity of the explosive was used, but 324 buildings were damaged, and 160 odd people were killed, and more than 800 injured. In 2011, in Oslo, in a government building, there was a vehicle explosion. And uh, after, after the explosion, the terrorists also, you know, <clears throat> went on a rampage shooting people. You can see the big hole created by the explosion, and one can see how, how lethal the explosion is. 2011, again, there was a bomb attack in Bombay. Eight people died, 30 people were injured. We also found some HMTD which is also a highly efficient explosive. In Asia, terrorists very often would use this explosive. In 2006, we found such explosives in Jakarta. The terrorists were planning to, to bomb you know, a consulate building. Unfortunately, uh, the case was uh, you know, detected. So what is the purpose of the what are the purposes of these uh, rioters or, or terrorists? They want to incite more people to take part in the violence, to get win people's support, to create panic, and to force people to actually give in to the <coughs> demand. So uh, other than the police investigation perspective, I'd like to also share with you some first personal experience, direct personal experience. On the 14th of July in Taiwan, in Sha Tin, uh, there was, you know, this uh, uh, public, you know, uh, you know, protest or demonstration. My mission at the time was that, that we, we had a simple operation in the Sha Tin, you know, uh, railway station, but in the end we were outnumbered at the scene, and in the end, we were being trapped and we were attacked. And we have to ask for, <clears throat> you know, colleagues to, to for, ask for reinforcement. So I think you can see the footage here. So the, of, the pe persons being attacked are our officers who came <clears throat> as reinforcement. You can s fortunately, uh, some <clears throat> reporters actually came to our rescue. Otherwise, this officer would have been seriously hurt. One officer had his fingers bitten off. He was fortunate because the, uh, the, the, uh, the surgeon was able to actually uh, reconnect <clears throat> his, his finger, uh, to re reconstruct his finger. So since we were doing investigation, I had to look at uh, review all these footages, and I always ask myself why we have such such a lot of violence. Uh, when you arrest this person, a person could be a simply a young people person, very often a very polite young man. Well, I studied criminology, so we were asking whether or not there was a lot of anger in these people, and didn't they that they didn't have this sense of. Uh, 
responsibility. Many of, of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, rioters were wearing masks. They, f they felt that they were anonymous and therefore they were more bold to do daring things because they don't have to face the consequence. So the only reason I can think of why they do this is the anger and the hatred which caused them to become a different person. If you look at some of the, uh, you know, propaganda, they have this slogan saying that they that want that they that that they should stay angry so that the violence could be sustained. Let's see, members, have any questions? Yeah, thank you, Superintendent. I think what you've told us just now, I think you gave us this high level you know, presentation, we're able to see the sequence. What we are most worried about is the escalation of violence. The devices used are becoming more and more advanced and sophisticated. I understand that there are certain things that you, which is not appropriate for you to discuss, for us to discuss here, but for Violence like this, do you think that they will continue? Normally, I would look at two things. First of all, whether we have some people who have already acquired the techniques to make these uh, weapons. And secondly, whether uh, they have such hatred that would actually, you know, cause them to to, to 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 become out of control and do such things. Putting it directly, I can say that there are some people who have the ability to cause so much harm to public order. As law enforcement officer we'll do our best to arrest these people. We hope we will be able to stamp out such uh, illegal activities. Now, by I ask whether or not these uh, vi such violence would ask, uh, would continue. You talk about uh, the you know weapons and explosives. It's not easy for them to be brought into Hong Kong. Why is it that we are now seeing more and more such weapons or explosives uh, being you know? brought into Hong Kong? Is it because uh, customs officers are not uh, doing the best uh, to, to stop that? Or is it that the rioters have new ways to bring in such uh, explosives or, or, or weapons? Now, let me put it this way. My observation and the evidence I have obtained from our investigation, of course, I cannot disclose the full details. Those who take part in such acts are very smart. They know uh, a lot about the internet, and very often they can resort to such means to access or obtain such materials and technology. Of course, as law enforcement agency, we see that this is a loophole, and therefore we are actually, you know, also enhancing our, our, our investigation. There was a case in Tai Kok Choi where 2.6 you know, you know, metric tons of explosives were found. That apparently is a lot of explosives. Of course, uh, it was an intelligence-led operation. Is it that people are now adopting a suicidal attitude because 2.6 metric tons is a large quantity? How would they be using such explosives? As I said just now, the majority of these are uh, homemade explosives. Like acetone or ammonium nitrate. They could be, there are legitimate uses for these uh, chemicals, such for example in making fertilizers when they are brought into Hong Kong. Now from the investigation Angle. We would want to find out through what channels 
have they been imported and so on, and who are the people, uh, you know, involved? But if you, but but to suggest that we can we should ban the use of these materials altogether would be difficult. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. And uh, I I kind of worry about the explosive quantity that we uh, discover, and also the people are getting more. And then, of course, if you uh, during the demonstrations, it would be a big threat to uh, any people. And I'm kind of worried that the manufacturing of these uh, items are inside the premises of uh, ordinary people and then will be potentially a very high risk. Uh, so if they don't have a safe uh, safety measure, then it would create really a, a, a big uh, a trouble for uh, the people. So I, I'm kind of worried that this uh, explosive is getting a lot of numbers and then maybe you only discover a few of those. So I I think, I don't know if you have any plans to strengthen your uh, discovery or uh, the busting of these kind of uh, materials. Now, secondly, uh, when ordinary uh, citizens in Hong Kong, they would see uh, the dangerous uh, the dangers about this, and hope that people in Hong Kong, the general public, would um, help you to report cases or suspected uh, situations on this kind of material. So, I want to just uh, supplement this problem. Uh, so, if you are having the search of those uh, factories, it's like an arsenal factory. It's a very professional and uh, prudent. Otherwise, it would be it, it will go off. And so when you do the search, do they have that kind of awareness about the safety uh, in their equipment and also manufacturing process? Or maybe I'll just answer your uh, question first, uh, Mr. Chairman. I don't think they have a high discipline. Um, they would just smoke even in those venues. And of course, if you're if you're manufacturing uh, explosives, uh, you're not supposed to smoke. So this is what, uh, Mr. Chu, uh, you're wary about uh, in ordinary residence uh, premises uh, in, in the uh, civilian uh, location is a very, very huge uh, uh, factor. And then we worry about and how we would handle, we try to do it more proactively and we try to use our resources to uh, uh, bust these cases and uh, as much as possible. And secondly, uh, for the intelligence uh, information, uh, we don't want to mention too much about this. We also try to be proactive to find out the raw materials uh, and also the personalities involved. And we also, uh, about uh, Mr. Chan, uh, Mr. Chu's uh, perspective, we would uh, feel that general public in Hong Kong, uh, right now, they're not having a high uh, sensitive uh, approach about the explosive. They're not really too sure about uh, the seriousness of this kind of stuff. So um, last week, you uh, noticed that the uh, PBRB and EOD has uh, do some propaganda about the uh, seriousness of an explosive or any bombs uh, could be a big threat to the public. Or maybe you can put it up on a Facebook uh, or in a website or try to do some propaganda movie, the you know, video clips. I, I, I believe it, it could be useful. And uh, also maybe in the community, the liaison officer, liaison officer, maybe for for society, uh, different the community uh, buildings, uh, organization, then you would uh, try to educate the public. Because this is really, yeah, truly very dangerous. So any other questions? I want to think that uh, on the people's side, uh, I, I believe this kind is very organized crime. and. It need resources and money, and did you find out any behind the scene that what kind of financial support that they're getting from? So, 
does the police uh, have any uh, idea or you have any uh, focus on that, uh, Mr. Lam? Uh, I think our organization, uh, our department is, is uh, organized crime in triad. So we are investigating the cases. And aside from the first priority, we try to minimize and neutralize the risk. And uh, also, we also try to find out the financial resources. Yeah, uh, the 2.6 ton uh, is a really big deal of uh, materials, and they all uh, imported. Uh, so, so no other questions. And uh, thank you. All. Thanks a lot. Uh, Mr. Lee, a very um, uh, the complete and introduction and presentation. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Now, let's go to our next item in the agenda. It's important uh, about the uh, complaining number, complaint figures. So let's uh, hear from the uh, complaint of Capo. So in 2020, in the first uh, two months, uh, we had uh, received 198 cases, RC, and then 28 of 128 of them uh, involved in the extradition bill. So, comparing to the 2018 figure, it's dropped 30 uh, cases. So, this is down 32 percent. In the first six months, uh, it's about a uh, complaint of the. Um, this is a drop of 45 uh, cases. And in the first two months, 100, 198 case RC, the, the minority uh, allegations, 198 is about 80.3%. A serious uh, about the uh, threats, um, etc., is about 39 cases. It's, uh, about 19.7 percent. About this, uh, uh, 44.9 is uh, negligence, and 34.8 uh, percent is an uh, improper manner, and only in the foul languages is 2.5 percent. And uh, comparing to the last year, it's a drop of 36 cases or 18 point uh, something percent. Now, for the serious allegations, the assault is 26 cases. So out of these 26, uh, nine cases are related to the extradition bill. Um, it's uh, composed of about 13.1%. A threat is of four cases. And the uh, improper use of authority and three cases. This 1.5% is fabrication of evidence. And uh, serious uh, is, is uh, comparing the 33 is about uh, six cases up from the same figure last year, over the year before. Now, we have to compare the 2019 and 2018. The uh, negligence is uh, drop about 85, is a uh, drop of 46 cases. An improper attitude from 59 to 69 cases, as up 10 cases, 16.9 incre percent increase. Our language is the same. It remains at five cases. For more serious of uh, complaints, uh, assaults up from 24 to 26, uh, two more cases. And among the 26 uh, assaults, 34% were related to the uh, anti exhibition bill. Now, for threat, it's of four cases. It's up from three. It's a 300% increase. For the four threats, uh, so one is related to the anti extradition bill. Now, the uh, abuse of uh, authorities uh, is up from one case, uh, only six, uh, now six cases. Out of six cases, four are related to the anti S extradition bill. Now, fabrication of evidences, they are uh, the same, three cases as uh, last year. Now, for the three cases, they are all 
related to the anti-extradition bill. So overall for the 2020 year, 198 cases, comparing to 2019 is a drop of 30 cases. So comparing just for the figures uh, to expect from the coming year, uh, is a chance of a drop in the remaining the remainder of the year. Now, also we want to report the complaints on the uh, anti-extradition activities. So for the capital, um, uh, we have the uh, staff uh, organization. We have two special investigation teams. There are two, 26 members uh, handle the uh, anti-extradition uh, investigation. In the, February 2020, we have come up with the third team. So now the three teams investigating over, there's about 36 members, including two uh, commissioner and then uh, uh, 24 uh, inspectors. And it depends on the situation of the complaints. We might have to increase or adjust the number of staff uh, to handle the complaints. Now, uh, so I will just report on the figure on the complaints on the anti-extradition bills. And so we received 5,141 complainants, over 1,678 cases of complaints. So there's about 569 cases of RC, and uh, it comprises 33.9%. Also. It's 1,109 cases CDC. It comprises of 66.1%. Now, for the RC, um, most of them were just uh, minor allegations, uh, 100 or 207. Uh, no, it's 113 cases. Now, among the uh, negligence of duty is 113 cases. Improper attitude is 207 cases. Uh, improper attitude and, uh, is 40 cases. Rude is 12. Foul languages, 11 cases, 1.9%. For the serious allegations, the total of 186 cases is 32.7%. Uh, uh, assaults is 91%. Uh, uh, 91 cases, 16%. This is about 85% of these uh, were that the uh, actually the arrests, the, the complainants that they arrested. And then there's a threats, about 10 cases. And uh, abuse of authority is 83 cases. Now, among the 5,100 cases, um, complainants, so are 613 of uh, people are involved in the uh, RC, and we had contacted about 444 people, and among them is uh, 114 people wanted to have the full investigation, and the 79 people is already in the process, and uh, seven people has. Withdrawn. withdrawn their cases. 88 people uh, has, hasn't decided what to hand, how to handle the uh, uh, situation. And then 52 people were being classified as uh, untraceable. Now, there are 70 people. Uh, they haven't replied to our investigation. And then 46 of those would, we would, uh, uh, coming to soon contact very soon. Now, for the over 4,529 complainants, 16.3% uh, would be uh, contacted already. So, the 48.7% of the complainants, that's 2,204, they uh, did not reply our um, inquiry. And then there's 613 people. The complainants never uh, left any contact, so we are unable to contact, con contact him. And it's 974 people will be in contact with them soon. So um, the uh, figure against the uh, uh, anti-extradition bill 
we would update those figures or the complaints uh, every two weeks, uh, reporting to the uh, uh, IPCC. And then the, there were people unable to contact or uh, the people that didn't get reply will have to follow up on those odd cases. So that's about it uh, for the thing that we have to report. Okay, let's on C. Uh, the uh, criminal and uh, the, uh, the behavioral uh, violations. So uh, I think we have submitted. Uh, I don't have uh, further on that. Now, recently, the police commissioner. This commissioner, in on this occasion, said that he already reprimanded some of the police officers. Could you give us the background, and also what is the work being done by Capo in, in this respect? <coughs> Thank you. In fact, the I think you would be aware that the commissioner. Uh, during several, you know, radio interviews, used the term uh, reprimand. Uh, what does reprimand mean? Well, what it really means is that in the course of performing our police duties, oh, this is nothing new. In the course of ordinary course of police duties, if we find a certain colleague not, you know, behaving properly in discharging his duties, we would we would reprimand or, 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 or sanction the person. What sanction or reprimand means, according to the commissioner, is that it is only the beginning of a procedure in respect of some improper behavior. We want to stop such behavior so that the officer concerned will discontinue with such improper behavior, or and also to send out a message to other officers that such behavior is not acceptable so that they wouldn't do the same thing. We often say that this is only the start. Uh, the, uh, if there is a complaint in respect of such uh, improper behavior, we will con uh, well, reprimand is not the end. Uh, we will continue to 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 to, pro to to deal with the complaint in respect of such improper behavior. If there is no complaint, uh, but if the behavior is not uh, proper, the police will continue to take further action, including disciplinary review to find out whether the officer has breached any of our disciplinary rules. So to put it simply, the reprimand or sanction is, you know, a long-established practice which we would use to stop a police officer from continuing with certain improper behavior. And when there is a complaint, we can continue to pursue that complaint. If there's no complaint and we find the behavior improper, then we can resort to other means, including disciplinary review, uh, to follow up on the on the action concern. Do members have any questions regarding the report? Yeah, Deputy Chairman. Thank you. Of course, on the one hand, it, when members of the public find or, or see certain police officers' behavior which is not so proper or are in breach of the rules, and if they complain, then we are able to follow up on these complaints. Well, another issue is when the police or the commissioner uh, finds the behavior of certain police officers are not proper, and then he would, uh, you know, reprimand the person, the officer concerned. But if there's no complaint, the officer has been reprimanded. But you said that uh, there could be further follow-up. If there is a complaint, there seems to be some, you know, prima facie evidence that there has been an improper act being committed. And then Keppel would follow up on that case. And secondly, when there is, if there is no complaint, but if the behavior of a certain police officer is improper or even uh, in breach of the is in breach of the rule, and even if there is no complaint, the commissioner or the police would still need to do something about it, so that the whole police force uh, can, you know, do better. 
Now, if these things actually happen, and it's not the first time, I think oh, well, the police could actually enhance the transparency. The public may see certain things which they think are improper, but actually uh, that they may not be able to see the whole picture. So perhaps, so my question is what can CAPO do in such a scenario? Well, thank you, Deputy Chairman. So after we have reprimanded the officer, and well, I think there would not be any impact on the investigation because CAPO will conduct a fair and impartial investigation. So if there is some complainant, we will take evidence from the, a statement from the complainant, and then we take a look at the first officer who has been complained against, we take evidence, and then based on the evidence, we will rule on the outcome of the complaint. Uh, about the term reprimand, if we see certain acts which we think consider to be improper, we need to reprimand the officer first because we want to intervene at an early stage and send out a signal to our other colleagues and the officer concerned as well that he should not continue with such you know, unacceptable behavior so that such behavior could be stopped. Of course, we can continue with our investigation when there is a complaint and if there is no complaint and if we have reprimanded the officer for the improper behavior, we may even you know, conduct a, a disciplinary review to see whether the officer has breached any of our rules and then we'll deal with it accordingly. And that's why we're saying that the reprimand itself is not the end of sto the story. Whether there is a complaint or not, and if, whether or not there is a disciplinary review, we will conduct an investigation in a fair and impartial manner. Now, after the commissioner has reprimanded the officer and, and determined that the behavior is not proper, that by itself is already a judgment. Perhaps in your management, you know, uh, you know, structure. Now, when someone is being reprimanded, or well, this is part of uh, of the actions taken by the management, because CAPO should act independently. And where there, when there is a complaint, then it should, you know, investigate on the basis of the evidence provided by the complainant, and pursue it accordingly. So the question is whether or not, uh, when in such a case, would the police detach itself? Now, if we use the term reprimand, it doesn't mean that the person is found guilty. We just think that uh, the behavior is improper. We want to step in at an early stage and send out a signal that one should not continue such behavior. Regarding the complaint, I can give you a simple example. Let's say we've heard a, a police officer using you know, improper language as his senior, of course, I would, I would, I should immediately advise, tell him that he should not use such uh, language because it's not proper. Uh, there might also be a complaint against this officer and we will continue with the investigation. Uh, but if you hear uh, an officer, you know, using such language at the scene in question, we would immediately tell him that it's not right, the right thing to do. But this would not affect the, the following, the, the, the investigation which follows. If the language being used is improper uh, on the part of this officer, we may, we will take other actions including disciplinary review and decide whether to not use such improper behavior may affect the image of the police and so on. So the reprimand indeed is just the, big, the start. Now, would it be the case that the capo has to, of course, uh, you know, give a, re a reply answer to the complainant? Uh, of course, you would begin with the uh, the evidence of sub submitted by the furnished by the complainant. As f now, if you discover any police officer who had not followed the police rules or policies, 
the, the commanding officer, the management, would immediately rectify that behavior. And if the behavior is very, very unacceptable, you would reprimand the officer. If the behavior is very, very unacceptional, uh, unacceptable, then the, the officer will be, will be uh, uh, suspended from duties. So now assuming that the officer has really, you know, you know, uh, engaged in a behavior which is very unacceptable, then he has been suspended from office, and then you have received a complaint against the officer, then of course you would have to pursue the procedure according to your procedure, and at a certain stage the two matters will, will have to be, you know, uh, you know uh, combined together. Is that the case? I believe uh, uh, what you've described just now is exactly what we would do. Like my colleague said, when we see that the behavior of a certain officer is such that we have to remind him, give him a reminder immediately, and that the behavior is so, the, the problem is so serious that we should, uh, you know, reprimand the person before we have finished with the investigation of the complaint. We need to send out a message to that officer and other colleagues, that, telling them that such behavior is problematic. So from the disciplinary, disciplinary angle, uh, I think this is something that the management should do uh, immediately. If there is a complaint uh, in respect of such a behavior, then I believe we would, one would need to look at the angle of the complaint. If the complaint is exactly about the behavior which is the subject of the uh, reprimand, then of course we will first of all find, try to find out what the complainant has to say, uh, and we would need to analyze the, complaint, the nature of the complaint. And when we investigate, we will make reference of, uh, before we reprimand the officer's concern, we would already have conducted some invest, in, internal investigation. Uh, we would do some fact finding first before we reprimand anyone. And when we investigate the, into the complaint, we will make reference of the context, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the, the the reprimand before we come up with a, a, a definitive recommendation. Well, just now, Madam Khan said that the reprimand is only the beginning; uh, it's not the end of the story. It's likely that you would have further follow-up, you know, uh, based on the nature of the facts of the complaint. So, from the management uh, angle, if somebody has committed, uh, any, uh, is, uh, if, behavior, if someone is improper, you will con continue to you would deal with it so that you would so that uh, you can correct such a behavior. <coughs> Secretary General. Uh, from the secretary's angle, I'd like to clarify one point. That is, so how would, the, uh, my question is, is how your investigation will actually tie in with investigation now part. We don't know how many cases we're lo looking at our notify notifiable complaints. Now, in future, when you submit a report to us, to be fair, would you also give us a background? Uh, and in the investigation report, you also tell us that the person, the officer concerned, had been su the subject of a reprimand. And secondly, if the behavior itself is confirmed to be wrong or improper. In your recommendation for sanctions against that officer, would you consider that a reprimand has been given earlier already, so that on your regarding your mechanism for censure, would you say that the person has been reprimanded once already, and therefore you would take that reprimand into account because uh, uh, you don't want to have a case of double jeopardy and so on. So how would you deal with that uh, scenario? Uh, I think the first question 
uh, I believe when we investigate the um, complaint case, so in our investigation, we would list out all the uh, related factors uh, that the IPCC would consider to put everything in, and in this case. So if, if we had the internal reprimanding of this officer, then in the report, we have to submit it with it. Now, regarding these disciplinary actions, I think every case, we have to look into each specific situation that we cannot just uh, make a conclusion, you know, a generalization of how we would uh, do the discipline, discipline act, the disciplinary action, and maybe we'll, in the future, how to come up with those uh, actions uh, with uh, the IPCC members. Maybe both of the committees can participate, right? On the qu second question, uh, I want to follow up. In many cases, uh, or certain police officers, uh, the improper actions, even without the uh, complaints. Uh, I think I was in quick support to that because uh, it would improve. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's advantages for the police and everyone. And uh, but I think I mentioned that for the follow up, the transparency, uh, so that the general public is aware, even without the uh, complaints, that we would still take action. So, no, as a policy, I believe uh, you don't have to mention a specific names. Uh, you know, it's uh, also the concerns about the privacy and other things. Uh, we we talk about that before. But now, in your procedures and your pol policy, how you would. Uh, reveal it, how you would uh, uh, express this kind of uh, transparency. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, now how we increase the transparency, we would discuss that. And after that, we would report to you later. I'm sure the general public they would have their expectation, uh, just assuming we don't have any uh, complaints uh, against the uh, uh, police officer, but if it's just over the limit, then there's a certain way uh, the, that you can man manage such situation, so that we make we can set that as our our objective to uh, properly uh, handle this. Now, my understanding is uh, in the Hong Kong Police Force. You have different levels and grades. So I believe, um, especially for inspector or above, that they have the responsibility to um, to work, you know, with the their subordinates and manage and also tell them what the proper actions or improper actions are. And they would take uh, some active uh, measures, and they don't really have to do it on from a commissioner. So maybe you have just uh, some supervisory level of uh, officers, that kind of grade. Now they would handle it. And I, I'm I'm sure that this kind of behaviors would happen most of the time, but uh, it would, you know, call the attention of the general public and. Maybe, I think recently when the commissioner mentioned it, uh, the reprimanding is n doesn't happen, shouldn't just happen this time. And maybe we have the ex expectation from the general public that we want uh, everyone in the police uh, uh, force would uh, follow this. And I think the uh, general public in Hong Kong would be concerned about something if they did wrong. And just uh, through the reprimanding would, would settle everything? No. That's, of course, uh, reprimanding is one thing, but you have to follow the procedures and also follow the facts, even without the complaint. So we have to follow the ordinary procedure. And if there, 
is some disciplinary action, then so be it. So we just, uh, just want to strengthen the Hong Kong police force to have such a procedure, and then you wouldn't be uh, you, you wouldn't be able to allow the uh, the general public to to come up with any complaints. So I think uh, some ordinary things that you just do it on a daily basis and uh, so that it would uh, not affect the operation of police. And so that's my understanding whether it is correct. Yeah, so uh, what Mr. Hui mentioned is the system of management, managing the uh, behaviors. So that's why you have the AMS and the service quality uh, committee, right? Yeah, maybe I want to respond uh, to Mr. Hoy and what he mentioned is really correct. So we have some uh, colleagues, uh, they having improper behavior, then we have uh, uh, complaining uh, mechanics. And so we also have, uh, we call it ourselves as disciplinary team uh, because we we have to follow the disciplinary regulations. So in our daily routines that some of our co colleagues were doing improper behavior, so any uh, supervisors should take the proper actions. Maybe if it's a minor thing, then uh, so some minor actions uh, being minor behavior just being wrong, then we have a uh, different way to handle it, maybe to educate them or to, um, or maybe for serious case, then uh, we would uh, have the disciplinary review. It's not just uh, facing outside, you know, but uh, so when something happened, then we have to review on the discipline's uh, action. And we want to emphasize that in a police force, any police officer, if they are monitored under the capo uh, mechanism, the supervisors would have the responsibility to follow up and uh, investigate the, for the uh, uh, evidence and according to the law. So uh, don't worry, we would not just uh, put everything down the carpet. I um, want to supplement something. I just want to strengthen the, there, there's a problem. I think the trust from the general public in Hong Kong has some doubt and they have uh, some thinking uh, that uh, some people think in order not to uh, disperse the uh, strength in the police uh, department, they would try to cover up things. So I think in this right now, uh, the general public would have a negative impact, a negative feeling on the police force because they thought the uh, higher officers uh, would cover up uh, some even illegal or or uh, the incorrect behaviors. So now, if in in a sense that if we don't affect the officers involved uh, performance or if to be a really fair treating treatment, now we have to increase our effort to let the confidence in the general public to to have their trust back on the uh, Hong Kong police. So in in previously we saw uh, one that uh, we saw something on the internet that the police officer forced the people to s apologize over certain issues and things like that. I think it happened and, and maybe the general public, you have to let the public know the higher ranking police officers they actually would pay attention to the improper behaviors of uh, any police officers. Uh, so 
It does not only improve the quality of the police, and it also would uh, help alleviate the confidence level uh, from the uh, Hong Kong general public so that we can uh, improve the relationship with the Hong Kong pub general public. Now I think uh, if the commissioner wanted to establish an uh, image, uh, a fair approach, and uh, it's like a very transparent approach, and then there are a lot of uh, open uh, policies, and I think it's, uh, it should be very useful. Any other questions? Now, if you don't have any further questions, and I think we just uh, adjourn the meeting, and I thank you very, very much for all of you attending the meeting. So I think we just call it off. Thank you very much. So so 就是3月24日 那麼我們就會馬上開會然後就會決定 全部的事件只有六個事件 那些問題都會在這個報告裏面包括的<笑> 我也希望在四月我們可以做得好的 Oh, you repeat that in English? Yes, certainly, certainly, certainly. I'm sorry, I've been uh, I've been having meetings uh, all day today in the last few days, so I'm a little bit out of breath at the moment. Uh, in fact, uh, I have a sore throat at the moment. Uh, uh, I don't think it is the virus. It's just a lot of talking, that's all. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I'm going to see my doctor later on just to find out. Uh, uh, I think you all be interested to find out uh, where we're at in respect of the thematic study report that we're, uh, uh, we're doing. Uh, the reason why we, we couldn't publish was that there was a judicial review. And uh, having uh, taken advice from our legal advisors, 
uh, the council decided not to publish the report at that date. Um, so uh, the judicial review will be heard next week on the 24th. Uh, and after that, uh, I expect that the judge will let us have uh, his decision uh, uh, sometime in April, ho hopefully early in April. But obviously, you know, I can't force the judge to give me an early uh, a decision. But uh, I, think, I think he will. Uh, now, after the decision, we will uh, then be um, having a meeting to decide, depending on what the decision is. Um, but we're still uh, continuing with uh, doing the report, uh, and uh, we've been working very hard on it. The report, in fact, uh, will cover all the events. In fact, starting from the 9th of June, 12th of June, 1st of July, 21st of July, uh, August the 11th, Sanok Lang, uh, August the 31st, and also uh, the, the, uh, 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 the presentation of uh, police insignia uh, during these events. So this will be a report which will cover all the things that uh, we intended to cover. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, uh, we will complete the report sometime in April. But uh, we do need to, in fact, uh, uh, have uh, the approval of the entire council for the report. Uh, which means that we need to have many meetings, and we've been having many meetings, in fact. Uh, the staff have been working very hard, uh, despite, in fact, the epidemic. They've come back to the office to work. Uh, so uh, uh, that's, that's where we are at the moment. Mr. Mr. Leon, you, you yeah, did yeah, confirm yes. that you are, you are working on the report throughout this period of the epidemic. Yes. But you're also claiming that uh, you cannot disclose the report because of the legal challenge. Isn't that self-contradictory? It, it's not. It's, 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 it, it is not. Virus, you should not be even working on the report. And my second question concerns yeah. uh, whether you have backtracked from your previous promise to the public where you should be able to disclose the report uh, in some time in February. Have you backtracked it and have the damages done to ITC? Uh, well, well, first of all, uh, I don't think I have backtracked this. The problem is that, you know, I wanted to produce uh, some report uh, sometime in February, but that report will be a very incomplete report, as I told you. In fact, uh, we could only probably go up to some time in, in early June. We probably won't be able to even do 1st July at that point of time. Uh, so uh, now, uh, we've completed now. It is said that uh, 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 what we're doing is, is ultra-virus. Uh, it is argued that it is. But we don't know to what extent it is ultra-virus at this stage. That's the problem, in fact. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the reason why, uh, uh, as a measure of caution, our, our legal advisors have advised us not to publish it, because we, we don't know what the extent uh, that is ultra-virus. Because the argument put forward has been very, very uh, 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 vague at this stage. Uh, 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 in fact, only last week I saw the final argument uh, that's come forward. Uh, and uh, those arguments, of course, will be put forward by the applicant next week. You can go and listen to that. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, uh, after the uh, decision, then we will make a decision. The reason why we continue with the work is that, first of all, we, we, we consider that a, a rather vague uh, 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 suggestion that we're ultra-virus, but again, you know, we don't know to what extent it is. But we have to do the work nonetheless, uh, because we have to understand these events uh, so that we could actually deal with these uh, complaints. We've now got over 500 complaints which have been reported to us by the police. We've had uh, over 700 notifiable complaints. Uh, uh, so uh, over 1,000 complaints, 1,500 uh, at the moment. So uh, in order to understand these complaints, we really have to do some study ourselves, uh, irrespective, in fact, of that, uh, uh, of the judicial review. And, and obviously, uh, uh, the judicial review itself uh, will help us, in fact, in future to guide our work. Uh, so it's an important uh, judicial review for us. Uh, and we'd like to know what the law is. Uh, I have my own views, but of course, you know, uh, my own view is, is not the law. Uh, only, only a judge can tell you what the law is. Thank you. 
你覺得可以即係四月、呃、法庭有結果，就是、可能一個理想啲嘅嘅嘅諗法啦。咁但係會唔會話考即係其實都唔知道要拖到幾時先可以公開到個報告先？會唔會現階段就其實即係先公開咗首階段嘅報告先咧？第二就係想問翻嗰、那個即係、呃、之前都話一百二十五宗嗰、那個、呃即係投訴警察局，即係已經完成咗調查，就交咗去監警會啦。咁其實想知道，即係嗰個嘅分類其實涉及主要係一啲乜嘢嘅投訴呢？同埋第三就係話，即係有冇即係監警會有冇、呃、即係收過有一啲類似投訴，就係話即係有一啲嘅、呃、市民去、呃、投訴警察課，係去投訴翻、呃、投訴警察課本身處理得唔好咧，即係或者即可能係佢哋因為我哋都即係收過有啲嘅個案就是，就係話。即係有一啲、呃呃、投訴人就話俾呢個投訴警察警察課遊説佢哋誒，即係用一啲簡便啲嘅、呃、方式嚟到去處理個投訴，而唔係即係同佢哋講話一啲全面調查其實好花時間嘅。咁、呃、你都不如、呃、都考慮翻用翻啲簡便投訴。有冇話收過呢一類嘅投訴咧？首先嚟講咧，就係即係關於嗰個報告先啦。就因為即係嗰個司法複核咧，當時嘅法官咧係准許呢個聆訊嘅時候咧，佢只係話咧，即、就、係、是、我哋係越權。但係咧，佢冇講話喺邊方面係越權個問題，所以變咗咧，即、就、係、是、我哋喺一個即係、就是、一個不知情嘅情況之下咧，同埋所以我哋嘅法律顧問覺得咧就話咧，咁呢個可能性好大嘅，我哋唔知係乜嘢嘢嚇，咁、啊、所以變咗咧喺呢個咁嘅情況之下咧，佢佢佢就建議咧，我哋咧就最好咧唔好咧係去公布呢、這個呢、這個報告。但係當時嘅時候咧，我哋只可以即係、就是、當時大概係誒一月嘅時候咧，我哋當時咧就算係公開二月嘅報告咧，只可以做到。就係、是、最多最多可以做到係，或者六月十二號，或者七月一號，嚇、啊。咁即係同埋咧，未必一定做得好好好完整啊，嚇。咁即係而家嘅時間咧，我哋比較做得更加完整，嚇、啊。所以變咗即係對整體嘅嘅工作嘅交代嚟講咧，而家係比較係，我相信咧係比較更加理想，嚇、啊。咁啊，所以變咗聆訊之後，法官即係作咗佢嘅決定，咁然後我哋就可以睇到啊，咁係唔係？係我哋越權啦，咁越權係邊方面咧？嚇、啊，咁所以變咗咧，即係、呃、我哋一定要知道，如果唔喺個不知情嘅情況之下咧，我哋做咗咧，可能會影響好多嘢、啊、所以我我唔想影響好多嘢嘅問題就係，咁另一方面咧就係即係頭先我亦都講咗咧因為係我哋而家要睇咁多個個案咧，我哋都要明白嗰個整體嘅背景啊，咁、啊、所以變咗咧，即係就算我哋做唔做，即係最後公唔公佈呢個報告咧，我哋都要去了解㗎啦個問題就。咁所以了解嘅時候咧，當然我哋做呢個工作，咁所以變咗咧，我哋同嗰個報告嘅工作係一模一樣嘅問題就係、是、如果係即係話我哋係越權嘅話咧，咁所以變咗咧，如果假定法官話哦你係越權，你唔可以做啊咁嘅時候咧，咁我哋只可以用呢啲資料咧，係去睇我哋逐個嘅個案問題就嚇。咁呢啲逐個個案本身點樣去處理咧？個問題咧，我就請秘書長同你講講，好嘛？剛剛才你第二、第三個問題嚇。咁就誒關於嗰、那個、嗯、因為反修例事件引致嘅投訴咧，咁頭先開會誒，同家入課都講咗，整體嚟講需要報投訴有五百六十九宗，涉及嘅人咧係有六百十二，咁啊呢、這個需支援投訴咧有一千一百零九宗，整體咧需要報投訴同埋需支援投訴咧，涉及嘅投訴人咧係有五千一百幾人，咁就啊以呢個需誒誒需要報投訴啊五百六十九宗。其實誒、啊、涉及嘅指控咧係有八百七十八項，最,最多咧嚇嗰五項咧，首先咧就係、是、第一就係話誒行為不當，第二就係疏忽職守，第三就不禮貌，第四就係毆打，第五咧就係、是、呢、這個誒濫用職權。呢五項指控咧，呢五樣指控咧，佔嗰個整數咧係大九成啊，九成。好啦，咁而五百六十九個誒、啊、個案啦，咁而家直至到三月六號啦。投訴警察課咧，係完成咗一百三十九個個案，咁亦都係將個報告咧交咗俾監警會。咁呢一百三十九個個案個分類係點樣呢？其實係有啊二十一個個案咧，投訴警察課係經過全面調查嘅。另外咧有四十九個個案咧，暫時投訴警察課咧係分類為無法追查。無法追查意思即係話咧，投訴人即係唔再同呢個投訴警察課。誒聯絡啦，或者唔再提供資料啦，咁啊無法跟進啦。咁而另外咧，係有誒六十誒多宗咧，六十三宗咧係呢個誒撤回投訴。撤回投訴即係話投訴人咧，就誒佢同投訴者再聯絡嘅時候咧，就覺得啊佢誒唔會再從呢個全面調查嗰個角度去做啦。咁咧就希望咧將呢個投訴咧由投訴警察課咧
經呢個科系嘅主管向當時嘅警員咧係一個即係一個誒誒誒 counsel 啦嚇。好啦，咁另外六宗嘅個案咧係經過簡便方法處理嘅，可能頭先就係呢位記者所講。咁喺每次誒投訴機構去聯絡啲投訴人嘅時候咧，都會解釋嗰個機制係點樣。咁誒喺呢個法例裏面呢，其實都有一個叫經簡易方法處理嘅。簡易方法處理呢，就係話誒投訴人呢，將佢嘅情況講出嚟，咁跟住呢，誒、呃、投訴嘅一方呢，係會將呢個情況呢，係交返俾科系嘅主管，科系主管呢，正式去會見呢個被投訴人啊，咁將希望佢呢，喺日後嘅工作呢，係有改善。呢樣嘢呢，係會格落個記錄嘅。咁呢，誒、呃、呢、這個呢，暫時我哋收到六個呢個個案。好啦，呢一百三十九個個案裏面咧，其實啊，暫時嚟講，經我哋啊嚴重誒、啊、投訴委員會啦，即係阿阿阿阿謝卓嗰個誒、啊、會，我哋通過暫時通咗兩個啫，兩個都係一個似乎投訴嘅個案嚟嘅。超越投訴個案咧，其實涉及都係誒不禮貌、出言為語嚇、出言為語。咁另外咧，其實咧喺誒呢段期間咧，我哋係出咗六十二個質詢，六十二個質詢，即係 previous。啲質詢係包括啲乜嘢咧？喺一啲誒無法追查嘅案件裏邊咧，我哋係要求投訴嘅一課咧，係盡力再揾一揾嗰個投訴，盡力再揾一揾投訴。第二咧就話有啲誒，譬如話支援投訴啦嘅誒個案咧，我哋係要求咧，投訴嘅一課咧係將佢同投訴人嗰個電話錄音俾我哋去確切確實一下，證實一下係咪真係個投訴人咧喺個電話裏邊，佢係好自愿、好 willing 咧。係去撤回呢個投訴，咁我做呢個工作。咁、啊、就、啊、另外有啲咧就係話喺嗰個無法追查一啲分類咧，我哋都有啲質詢嘅。因為咧、啊、有一啲喺今次反修例事件有啲、啊、案件咧，投訴個案咧好複雜嘅，即係話、啊、有投訴人咧，譬如話投訴人喺佢同警察有一段好長好遠嘅距離，咁跟住佢投訴咧，警察咧係有警員係用呢個及格嘅電筒嚟照射佢。佢有啲講唔到係邊個警員個 number， 咁而現場亦都有好多警員咧係用揸住個強光嘅電電，咁嘅時候誒，頭先一課咧係係追查唔到，即係揾唔到嗰個被投訴警員嘅身份。而另外亦都話有啲場景係喺，譬如話喺沙田咁樣，係誒發出嚟煙，住樓上嘅幾人咧就閂唔住窗啦，咁跟住咧就受呢個出嚟煙嘅影響，咁跟住佢投訴。咁但係當日嗰可能誒邊一個發呢個出嚟煙咧？咁、啊、邊個警員咧？佢講唔到。咁但係喺呢度嚟講咧，暫時係話揾唔到嗰個被投訴警員，但我哋同投訴人咧係傾緊。其實係咪係喺現場嘅指揮官啊，或者另外一個誒喺警隊裏邊，即係或者成個警隊咧係被被投訴啊咁樣。即係呢樣嘢咧係我哋用傾緊嘅。所以咧，我哋其實有啲質詢翻翻佢嚇咁樣。主席你好啊，係請講係係信報警。有幾個問題想問翻啦。請請講。第一個就係話，即係其實可唔可以澄清翻就係頭先話四月底希望可以即係做到嗰個係咪第一階段嘅報告啦？呢、這個唔係一個全面嘅報告啦，係係。咁誒，即係誒，咁、呃、所以都想問翻嘅就係、是、誒、呃，如果即係你會點樣睇？你覺得即係誒個報告其實即係市民誒接受嘅機會高高唔高啦？同埋就係、是、都想問翻就係你誒、呃，即係覺得即係喺而家好似即係一啲誒、呃、衝突啊，或者係。嘅誒，即係一啲嘅暴力事件嘅數字比較少咗嘅時候，其實你覺得仲有冇一個好迫切嘅需要去將個報告去去去盡快出嚟啦？第二第二個問題就係想問翻、就是，就係誒呢個嘅誒、呃，你哋喺會上其實都有講到，就係話即係有警員即係要求誒、呃、市民無故去道歉嗰樣嘢啦。咁其實即係誒呢個嘅葵青指揮官誒、呃、謝振聰之前就喺區議會上面咧，即係就回應呢件事件嗰嗰陣時候咧，就話。即係警員光明正大執法嗰陣時候，其實係無需要道歉嘅。你點樣睇佢呢個言論？我我相信首先嚟講咧，就你第三個問題先啦，好嘛？即係第三個問題咧，如果係有投訴嘅時候咧，即係我哋一定會即係誒要誒呢個警察投訴科要去誒、呃、要去處理啦。首先嚟講咧，咁我哋咧，因為呢個比較重要嘅，因為每一次而家嘅呢啲嘅修例事事件嘅嘅案件咧，我哋認為一個重案嚟嘅，所以變咗咧，我哋一定咧會派。誒一個觀察員係去去睇嘅，咁所以變咗咧，即、就、係、是、首先我一定要秉公辦理啦，係嘛啊誒，即係需唔需要投訴呢？我誒需唔需要道歉喎？或者呢啲咁嘅問題咧，我相信我我我暫時我我唔會有有任何評論。誒、啊、當然即係首先嚟講咧，即、就、係、是、一個警察執勤嘅時候咧，應該要按法律辦事。問題就啊啊
。咁所以即係睇翻當時嘅情況係點樣，因為我哋睇喺而家我都唔知道個情況係點樣嘅時候咧，我係無法回應嘅。但係我一定會即係、就是、我哋一定會咧以法律為依歸咧，以個事實本身咧為佢嘅依據嘅啊。誒、啊，所以關於即係、就是、我哋嘅報告本身咧，就即係誒，你覺得即係、就是、我哋應該處即係、就是、抱咩態度咧個問題？誒，即係有冇用咧？個問題對於我嚟講咧，呢、這個報告係一定有用嘅。但係咧，係根據我哋嘅法法例，因為我哋嘅法例咧係需要咧，係我哋係去處理咧，即係呢啲即係誒需呢、這個需回報嘅嘅投訴啊。咁所以變咗咧，因為咁多啊，同埋咁多事件啊，所以變咗咧，我哋必須咧係係要要去蒐集一啲嘅嘅事實咧，係去去作我哋嘅背景嘅一個一個嘅嘅。誒誒嘅嘅認知嘅問題就係、是、啊，咁所以變咗咧，即係誒誒公唔公佈，或者係唔係我哋呢一個即係誒誒職責咧，本身嚟講咧，我哋都要須知噶啦，都都要知道噶啦。所以變咗我哋係蒐集呢啲資料，係為我哋呢個嘅即係主要嘅職責，係去睇呢啲須知投訴嘅啊。咁所以變咗要睇翻嗰個法院本身。最後佢哋嗰個判決會係點咧？然後我先可以作到一個最後嘅決定，會唔會公佈？啊，咁但係咧，即係公佈會有咩結果咧？誒、啊，我我我冇法即係係去左右個問題，我只可以按我哋嘅條條例去辦事嚇。咁、啊、我哋嘅條例辦事係需要咧，係我哋去去去處理呢啲嘅需知投訴嘅時候咧，係有足夠嘅資料個問題。啊，咁而家咧，我哋只係蒐集足夠嘅資料。想問翻就係話，如果即係個市民係有，係個市民對嗰個報告真係有不滿嘅話，其實你哋會點樣去跟進？哦，因為呢、這個呢、這個報告咧本身咧係即係為我哋自己工作嘅。如果佢對對佢誒呢個報告嘅不滿嘅時候，佢可以第一咧就係即係向我哋去去指正，或者我哋做錯咗啦，或者啊，或者我哋啲即係蒐集嘅資料唔夠咧，唔夠全面咧啊，因為我哋蒐集資料嘅時候，我哋係冇權力去蒐集資料嘅問題就係、是，我哋只可以咧即係用各種嘅即係嘅嘅嘅。誒誒各種嘅嘅渠道啊誒自愿嘅渠道係受到譬如警察部門會佢自然俾咗一啲材料俾我哋啊咁啊我哋冇權咧係即係派個傳票去去叫人去去去去去將呢啲資料俾我哋同埋真實嗰樣俾我哋啊咁所以我哋只可以咧即係盡我哋所能咧係去即係收集嘅呢啲資料。咁如果市民認為我哋即係呢個報告裏邊有部分係不實，咁先算啦。咁我我歡迎佢哋即係同我哋即係誒誒誒講嘅嚇嚇嚇。唔好意思，主席轉頭咧，有個委員啊，仲有一條問題啦。其實成個運動咧係當時八三一之後咧，其實仲有好多唔同嘅事件發生。即係你哋監管係咪其實都收到之後發生之後嘅資料？你哋係咪會唔會誒再傾下會唔會係其他嘅事件嚟？可能十一號啊？即係八三十一號往後嘅事情都會審視呢個情況咧，同埋就想問翻咧，即係阿錢志榮委員咧，其實佢再續任今次任期嘅時候咧，其實監管局係冇罕欠啊。其實過往咧每個委員咧都有都有罕欠，其實個原因係啲乜嘢咧？以後會唔會譬如委員續任之前都有一個罕欠嘅程序咧？嗱，首先嚟講罕欠唔係我哋做嘅，罕欠係政府做嘅。問題係，因為呢啲係政府委任我哋啊啊呢、這個即係即係即係特首代表政府去委任我哋嘅委員啦啊，咁所以變咗咧即係誒罕見咧就係唔係我哋所做嘅工作，即、就、係、是、我我相信你要問一問，即、就、係、是、政府嗰方面點解會咁去做法啊嚇？我哋我阿前委員咧收到封信話誒誒繼續委任佢咁樣，咁啊咁咁啊當然會告訴我啦嚇，咁、啊、我只係知道呢樣嘢啫嚇，即係罕見程序我唔知嘅。咁啊，關於其他嘅嘅嘅事情咧，我哋即係都會即係喺呢個報告裏邊咧，係會即係描述嘅。但係咧，就因為我哋時間所限咧，就冇可能咧喺呢六個事件咁深入咁樣係去去研究。但係咧，誒、呃、大家會會睇到嘅咧，就係呢啲投訴咧本身咧係即係每個月本身咧都有嘅，所以變咗咧，我哋啲投訴喺處理呢個投訴嘅時候咧，我哋亦都會參考誒、呃、我哋所所即係蒐集嘅嘅資料。咁其實你會睇翻咧，即係十一月後咧，係投訴少咗。嗯，但係因為牽涉到誒主席你講話商台嘅，但係因為牽涉到即係後面特別係即係喺大幾間大學裏面提到嘅，即係嗰啲事件都係公眾非常之關注，都係衝突最即係其中一個。
當時最激烈嘅。喺呢啲事件之後，會唔會再有報告檢視翻？因為當時都好多衝突，特別係即係有一啲針對警員指控，譬如話係制服疑犯之後，仲不斷咁毆打佢，呢啲都係一啲非常嚴重指控，公眾都好關注。即係呢啲事件係咪之後應該要有第二段階段嘅報告去繼續跟進咧？另外就係想問翻，即係、呃、好似譬如話今日嘅會議咧，見到好大部分嘅時間咧都係誒、呃，即係誒、呃、李桂華。警司喺度即係匯報翻警科嘅工作，但係相對嚟講，好似就少啲見到有委員係就住一啲可能係警員或者、呃、被公眾質疑嘅事項咧去作出質詢。其實監警會係咪而家仍然發揮到緊佢應該要發揮嘅功能首先嚟講咧，我哋嘅功能咧係法律所所誒、呃、賦予我哋嘅功能嘅，我哋只可以喺個法律嘅框架裏面去做。咁所以喺我哋法律框架裏面咧，我哋、呃、已經即係同警方咧。係不斷咁樣，今日你都睇到嗰啲投訴嘅數字，同埋嗰啲投訴嘅嘅誒嘅處理方法啊，即係其實咧，即係誒誒，你可以睇翻十一月啦，誒、啊、嗰、那個事件咧，譬如兩大學嘅事件咧，亦都係有投訴嘅嗰啲嚇嚇，咁啲、啊、投訴咧，我哋一定會處理啊呢方面啊，咁所以變咗咧，即係唔會話咧，我哋唔會處理，同埋咧，我哋唔會話唔理嘅呢啲事啊嚇，誒咁所以但係咧，我哋只可以咧喺嗰個法律嘅框架裏邊咧，係去做我哋嘅。呃、我哋嘅工作、啊啊、你哋認為即係我哋誒，譬、呃、如公眾認為我哋可唔可以即係發揮我哋功能咧？嗱、啊，我哋嘅發揮功能咧，我哋係一個兩級嘅做法嚇。咁、啊、如果認為我哋呢個兩級嘅做法係唔夠嘅話咧，可能咧就要向政府講咧，係要改變我哋功能。啊、但係而家咧，林鄭都話即係獨立檢討委員會咧，可能喺短時間疫情過去之前咧都處理唔到，但係我哋都唔知疫情幾時之完，係咪代表呢啲社會事件就可以被放下咧？社會係咪仲可以向前走咧？如果咁樣？我我我我冇聽到呢句説話，我我亦都對於我嚟講咧係唔重要嘅，因為點解咧？即、就、係、是、我哋嘅工作就係工作啊！如果疫情當然即係如果係即係誒誒誒不允許我哋工作嘅時候咧，當然我哋冇法工作啦，係嘛？咁但係誒、呃、事實上嗰啲唔係啊！我哋而家而家而家都係有疫情啊嘛，大家傾緊偈啊，係嘛？戴緊口罩啫嘛，係嘛？啊，我哋都可以可以繼續工作㗎，啊，咁我哋亦都係繼續工作緊，啊，咁所以變咗誒疫情咧，暫時嚟講咧，對我嚟講係冇影響㗎，啊。但係先講翻呢個議程嗰方面，今日都係教你話誒、呃、警司都係講翻，即係誒佢所謂嘅示威者有幾暴力啦。即係但係其實誒、呃，即係監警會其實係監察即係警員嗰、那個、嗯、即係執法噶嘛。即係嗰個議程係咪警方提供你哋就接受咧？即係你有嗰、那個問題就係、是、即係誒警方係即係提議做呢樣嘢嘅時候，咁我哋都需要知道㗎，係嘛啊？咁當然如果係即係其他嘅投訴。係即係對於即係誒警方嘅有問題啊，對於佢哋嘅質疑啊，各方面嘅時候喺投訴裏邊，我哋一定會睇嗰個投訴嘅，唔會唔睇。咁樣係俾警方牽住鼻子走咧，監警會。誒、呃，我諗我哋都可以牽佢鼻子喎。問題點解唔得啫？個問題就係嘛？誒，我哋做呢個報告本身亦都係即係去去去知道即係嗰個嗰、那個實際嘅情況啊，係嘛？啊，咁所以變咗咧，但係個問題咧就係、是、喺我哋嘅法律框架裏邊咧，嗰、那個調查咧係警方做嘅。我哋唔係做調查，我哋只係咧係監察嘅問題係啊，我哋係冇調查權力嘅。Do you feel the inquiry is a better way out given the situation? Ah, in my position as chairman, I'm not going to say anything as to that because my position as chairman is to actually do my work according to the ordinance. As a private citizen, I have already said, in fact, there's no reason why we we should. Uh, preclude, in fact, uh, a, a commission of inquiry, but that is entirely for the government and the community, and not for this uh, uh, this organisation. It's an inaction from the government, which repeatedly. Well, uh, uh, that 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 is up to everybody to uh, to comment. I, I'm not going to comment on that because in my position I cannot do so. I'm only exercising my uh, my powers as well as uh, really doing my duty as chairman of this council. As far as this council is concerned. Uh, we do our work according to the ordinance. What, what, what if there's an appeal against the uh, judgment uh, of the first of a first instance? Uh, uh, it could end up uh, for months or years. Uh, uh, we, well, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I did the Harbour case. I mean, the appeal, in fact, was, uh, went very quickly. <laughs> so, so uh, you are still going to dispose report? Uh, yeah. You are still going to dispose report even there's an appeal? Uh, we, we don't know. We, it rather depends on what the judge says, really. Mm -hmm. 好多謝曬大家，唔該曬阿主席，又見到個會議啊！所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以
with, uh, and I, I will be asking for the advice of our legal advisors on that. Although I'm a lawyer, I mean, I, I, can't, I, I can't be my own lawyer on this one. I hope you understand this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.